I was just telling Brad before we started tonight that um, I, I thought I was an overachiever, but Dr. Roberts is like a major overachiever. I mean, I have a summary of his bio that is still too long and it's a summary. So I'm gonna highlight some points, but maybe I, I'm sure I won't get everything. Um, so Dr. Roberts um, was an amazing professional athlete. He was a three-year starting quarterback and defensive back for Columbia University. He set 17 Columbia and 14 Ivy League football records. He um, not only was an excellent football player, but he was also an excellent baseball player. And he had many um, achievements in baseball. He, um, in 1964, was a Playboy All-American team. 1964, he was an ECAC Co-Eastern Football Player of the Year. 1965, he, he was Met Player of the Year in baseball. 1965, he was first team All Eastern League and All East. 1965, he batted a .386, 30 RBI in just 21 games. He was drafted by the St. Louis Cardinals in base for baseball. He was selected by the AFL's New York Jets. He signed with the Cleveland Browns. Actually, um, when he signed with the Cleveland Browns, he actually uh, had a deal to go to medical school and he went to Case Western Medical School for uh, medical school as he played in the NFL. So who does that? <laughs> Goes to medical school and just plays in the NFL. I mean, um, he played with the Miami Dolphins. Um, and not only this, um, he went on to cardiothoracic surgery and he's performed over 4,000 open heart surgeries and has trained dozens of doctors in cardiothoracic surgery. Uh, in 2006, he was awarded by Columbia University as um, in the Hall of Fame. Um, in 2011, he was uh, honored with the National Football, Football Foundation's Distinguished American Award, which is the highest award you can get in the National Football Foundation. He's written four books on cardiac surgery. He's held key positions at Northwestern University, the University of Nevada, University of Florida, and Temple University. He was the chairman of cardiothoracic surgery at Boston University Medical Center. And finally, he's the founder of the Living Heart Foundation in 2001, which he will talk about. So if that's not a lot of stuff, <laughs> it's a lot. So without further ado, I'd like to um, have Dr. Roberts take the stage. Well, thank you all. And that was quite an introduction. About a third of it was true and a lot was hyperbole. Uh, but it's been a pleasure uh, to review uh, what Dr. Baza and her team has done. And I had a, a brief chance to meet with uh, members of the team. And I can't see how it can be done any better than the way it's being done right here in this community. So I'd like to give her a round of applause. Please join. The, the Living Heart Foundation uh, is an organization that was founded in 2001. Uh, it's a 501c3, uh, and it's kind of a family affair. My wife helps, two of our sons help, uh, and so many of the, the NFL and the NFL Players Association and players have helped us to travel around the country and help improve the health uh, of former NFL players. We like to say that uh, the life of an NFL player we see on TV, and these are great athletes, 
and that was one of them right over there. And he played for many years, and he was a great player and a great leader, and he carries on the same lifestyle now that football is over. And he's always helping uh, and promoting uh, youth and the game of football. Uh, believe it or not, there's a little over 1,800 active players, the ones we see on TV playing in the 32 teams, but there's about 20,000 players in total, meaning over 18,000 are former players. So there's many more former players than active players, and we like to say that that's life uh, in the fifth quarter. Four quarters of football, in the fifth quarter is their life, uh, which is many years after football. Uh, athletes are usually in, in great shape when they play, but sometimes after playing, uh, when they're not training on a, on a regular basis and the years start rolling on, uh, it gets harder to uh, stay in good shape. And just like all of us have the assignment of keeping ourselves in the best possible shape we can uh, for the rest of our lives so we're able to uh, live a full and active life, take care of our families and reach out into the community to help, so do many of these football players reach out and help. This is an example of one of the great quarterbacks. His name was Johnny Unitas. Uh, he played for years with Baltimore, and he was considered one of the greatest quarterbacks that ever played. Uh, but he also played a price after football. Uh, and you may now know of stories that players' health uh, is sometimes a problem after they finish playing, uh, where cardiovascular problems become an issue, uh, where now uh, concussion that occurs during the years when they played football uh, can in some cases lead to dementia at a later stage in life, and that, as you all know, can be a crippling problem. We all have it in general in, in society, all people, uh, but the football players may have a higher risk for developing concussion and dementia. In 1994, uh, began a period uh, where the NFL and the NFL Players Association decided to look into the health of their players, and it's something they, they should do. And fortunately, they're doing more and more of that as time goes on. So what was found, uh, and it relates so clearly to large body size and the, the ill effects of large body size on many organ systems in the body. Uh, and if you can read uh, in the third column that the linemen, that's the bigger players that play NFL football, had a 52% greater risk of dying from heart disease uh, compared to an age match group in the general population. And the, the last bullet shows that the largest, the most obese of these players, the biggest linemen, 64% uh, of linemen had six times greater risk uh, than those of the other smaller NFL players. So it, it's giving the message that the football guys are not different than the general population, except those that are really big, that don't lose weight, they're going to have a lot of trouble 
as the years roll on. But now, at least we know what the targets are and what they should be doing. Uh, and Barrett and I and others travel the country, reach out to the community, work with hospitals to try to get everybody aware of what can be done to minimize risk, to live healthier, uh, and to have a more active life. This shows some, uh, some data from studies that we've done uh, with the Living Heart Foundation. Uh, and as Dr. Vaza has said, the metabolic problems that are associated with large body size, and I look down in the audience here and, and those that have had surgery, and you're looking awful good to me. <laughs> Keep it up. Uh, but how much you've helped yourselves with all of these factors related to diabetes and high blood pressure and heart disease and sleep apnea, you've done a good thing. And we've got to get more in the community to be thinking along those lines, because if you have that weight problem, we've got a solution for you right in this community. Some of the other problems are listed on, on this slide, uh, but the problems uh, that players have are basically the same problems that everybody has. Uh, uh, the concussion, dementia, you're hearing a lot about that now in, in the NFL, and we wonder with our kids, uh, at, at a young age, playing a contact sport and getting some contact, it's a question of, is that causing or setting the scene for injury later down the road? Part of the problem has been that the doctors, we've been a little behind on concussion, and we haven't been, over the past 10 years, so attentive uh, to studying concussion and the potential consequence of uh, dementia. But now we're starting and collecting the data and doing the studies, but it's going to take us time before we understand and get answers. These are some of the many uh, hospitals and facilities that we've worked with around the country, and we're happy to be working with you all here now. Uh, and this shows our, our logo, uh, our logo with the NFL players uh, and Living Heart Foundation and the HOPE study and the HOPE community effort that we're just beginning. And we've been fortunate that Covidian has been such a uh, supporting mechanism for this program. So I'm tickled pink to have been able to talk to you. Uh, and I think you've got a wonderful program. Let's build on it. Let's make it better. And I wish you all good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Roberts. Um, I'm sure the hospital is looking forward to working with your Living Hope Foundation as well.